You are entering the parkbooks.com domain. Welcome. Welcome to this week's episode of The Perceptive Readers, a podcast series made in the product of culture, aka Parkbooks website's office. Hi, I'm James. Welcome to this Perceptive Readers Podcast. Hi, I'm James Lynch. Love does not look for loopholes, but sometimes the details will make you use thinking ability to at least see where something else can be decided upon. Hi, I'm James and welcome to this Park Books Update Moment. Today I want to talk about not only the statement that you've heard before, love does not look for loopholes. And hopefully you remember what is meant by that. All the same, maybe you'll be able to pick up at least four more points, if not eight points, Maybe even more, depending on the length of this Park Books Update moment, to get the sense, once again, of what I used to mean and still mean by love does not look for loopholes. Yet, because of the details at times, it will certainly cause you to have to see, is there a better way to resolve this issue? What is the example today? Well, one, I just created a new page for the parkbooks.com website and it's actually called Thinking Presents. Yes, it's a new page and on there, I encourage you because it's on the home page right now to go and look at that new page because it starts off as taking time to think. And I even say, you know, welcome to the thinking area Really, in parentheses, well, the whole site, of course, you know what it is, is for thinking and enjoying, yes, music, contemplation, theater, etc. Now, it's also an encouragement for your eyes, ears, and mind, along with your heart to be ever-present with the topics there. What will you see there? Where well, you'll see poetry, some of my poetry. You'll see at times interviews, uh, documentaries, etc., etc. What's different between this page and the many other marvelous pages and articles on this website? Well, on this page, no, you do not have to wonder whether a video was put there for you to think or not. Yes. From the documentaries, even to the lyrics or music that you hear, it has something meaningful to say. Something to think about, if not solely for one video, it may be in the whole row of, like I said, 4, 8, or 12, something that deals with, huh, as I exercise my critical thinking. Or my thinking ability, depending on how you want to express yourself, what is this telling me? What am I gathering from this information? So, isn't this something to actually introductory or introduce this page on the world on this December 16th, 2021? Uh, one of the persons that I highlight, besides my own, of course, sage poor artistry, happens to be Taylor Swift. Why am I introducing or using Taylor Swift as the first example? Now, some of you uh, first may uh, start off with a variety of reasons, from the good singing to the beauty uh, to the smarts, etc. Yes, if you end up saying her intelligence and her interview, you hit it right on the head. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go right back to the beginning of how I opened this Pop Books Update moment where I said, love does not look for loopholes, but due to the details at times, you may have to say, look, can we find a better way to resolve this, okay? So, in an interview, 
that Taylor Swift had with uh, Seth Meyers. Uh, they were talking about her new release of her album in this year of 2021, uh, the Red Al Album. And she said something. I want you to pay attention to this. That, you know, of course, in the interview that sometimes the person who does that, they have the questions. But she asked Seth that she wanted to explain. She feels she has to explain the reason why she was going back through re-recording her albums. Very interesting reasons because, you know, uh, she brings out a fact, a fact that many artists do not own the sole rights you see uh to their music or albums and sometimes yes the the uh the rights uh the uh, other uh, the catalog if you will are actually sometimes just bought and sold almost like at an auction you see uh sometimes you don't even know who might be buying your stuff but that's just a side uh salt on that but anyway she mentioned especially with people you know being so busy and you know with life and stuff that she does feel she needs to explain why she's doing that now let me stop right there because this is one of the points that i want to encourage you perceptive readers on the fact of the matter is you know sometimes uh, people say and i'm going to tell you something um that i've experienced from real life i'm not going to dwell on it but you know again if i said i stand by it and no matter what anybody else say uh in the context of what i'm saying it in i i know i'm right and and if somebody you know when i say people really care about how you feel about things they normally try to once again sit down and really you you see see why you're saying what you're saying so what is that uh statement that statement is, remember when she said she feels she needs to explain the reason. It's like, so she wanted to explain why she was re-recording her albums, you see. And as I said before, some people may say, oh, you don't have to do that. You don't owe anybody any explanation. And of course, that is true. My emphasis is on, though, if somebody does want to talk about it or say something about it, allow them to talk about it. And that's all I want to say on that one. Now, what was it that she brought out that was, again, so interesting? I've already touched on the fact of the matter that she did not have, you see, uh, the right to own her own musical catalog, you see, from the very beginning, basically. And now, you see, some, what, 10 years later or what have you, she has now become in, or has been able to acquire, if you will, the situation where, yes, all she has to do, because it was her original songs, her original music, her original thoughts, that she just said, well, I will make a re-recording and call it the Taylor Swift version. And see, and by doing that, you see, by doing that, now she still all the royalties and proceeds and everything coming from those type of versions that people listen to and purchase. Hey, who does it go to? Yes, it goes to her. And one of the things that Seth Meyers uh, brought out is... Ooh, what an interesting way or something. I'm paraphrasing uh, to find that loophole. However, since I told you this page is dealing with thinking and thinking ability. Why do you think she did that? Does her explanation sound reasonable? Does it sound just? Does it sound fair? What do you think about it? Well, since this is the first time I'm doing this page, I'm going to share my answer because, you know, sometimes I'll just ask you a question and have you think about it. But in this case, I want you to really understand why the critical thinking and the thinking ability would bring somebody like Taylor Swift to this conclusion. And I said it right in the beginning of this Park Books Update moment. 
You've heard me use the expression sometimes, the devil is in the details. And boy, that really has a, a lot of meaning to it. But one of the main ones that it has been used since, I mean, from the 20s on, 1920 that is, <laughs> you see, on all the way down to this day, is sometimes people, once again, genuine, kind-hearted talented creators and singers will once again pursue a contract and yet you know with a lot of trust in mind on top of that because you know it, it, it's a you know you, it is what it is and what ends up happening somewhere in some of these paragraphs or what have you the next thing you know you find out you know all you're doing is really getting the uh, marketing promotion and then basically where we'll make sure that you still eat and have a roof over your head. And yes, and, and some luxuries as well. And that's what it ends up boiling down to sometimes. And so you have to think even in the beginning. You've heard me use the expressions pretext. And pretext means when somebody may come to you and even offer something, but it really does have something in it that's really meaning something else. It's another agenda. And a majority of the time when somebody says pretext, it does mean it's going to either price, price gouge you or take something from you that you wouldn't give away otherwise, uh, you know, if the person was very upfront with it. So remember, was it already built on, once again, a fair and just, you know, communication back and forth, uh, decision making, et cetera, et cetera, you know, in the contract? Uh, was it already, as somebody would say, you know, being done in an honorable way? Now, that is something that you can decide on. And so the point is, if it wasn't up front, because she even mentioned she should have asked more questions. But as I stated before, you know, we all supposed to be honest people in the first place, you see. And yes, it's a learning experience. But hopefully, you see, as person learn from this interview, they would now already be forewarned and forearmed that no matter how good something sounds, make sure I not only thoroughly go through the contract, but yes, also, hey, if I want to make adjustments here and there, uh, you know, go back to negotiations here and there, you have every right to do that. And so if it doesn't fit for the both of you, what do you do? You just say, OK, well, uh, maybe next time, you see. So thank you for being here on this Pop Books Update moment. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality. <laughs>